So now we're ready for the second lecture of the colloids lectures um, on lyophilic colloids, so in other words, micellar solutions. It's going to continue on with the same objectives as I set out at the beginning of the first lecture. There are external factors that will also impact on the formation of micelles or change the critical micellar concentration. So other additives that could be um, added to the surfactant solution, so in other excipients that might be in the solution that could affect the CMC, and also the temperature. So, and the effect of temperature will be more pronounced on non-ionic surfactants. So first of all, if you think about temperature, you know that as you increase temperature, you tend to improve the solubility of the surfactant. And so by improving the solubility, that will also change the drive to form my cells. But what I want to focus on here is the effect of adding different additives to the, to the formulation. First of all, let's look at the addition of electrolyte. So if we add salt to a solution, then it will affect the critical micellar concentration for ionic surfactants. So surfactants where the head group has a charge that isn't gonna have a major effect on surfactants where the head group is non-ionic. So for ionic surfactants, if you increase the electrolyte concentration, so if you increase the salt concentration, that is going to impact how the charges on the head group of the surfactant behave. And in fact, it reduces the repulsion between the charged head groups that was limiting uh, the formation of my cells before. So it basically screens out the impact of the charge on the head group. And this means that it means that my cells will form at lower concentrations when salt is added. So here you can see that for our sodium dodecyl sulfate um, surfactant, so sodium is the counter ion, dodecyl means 12 carbon chains, and sulfate is our negative um, iron head group. So it's an anionic surfactant. And if you add salt to it, different concentrations, adding the salt will decrease the CMC. So it will make it so that micelle formation is favoured. And this reduces the critical micellar concentration. It will also increase the size of the micelle because you'll reduce that repulsion in the head group um, that would have prevented, say, would have re restricted the number of molecules that would be present in the micelle. So it'll also have the effect of being able to increase the size and the um, aggregation number, so the number of surfactant molecules that are within the micelle by adding salt. Now, if you add um, other um, additives to the solution with the surfactant in, each have, has the potential to impact the, um, the critical micellar concentration. So if you add organic molecules, it could increase or decrease depending on the properties. So here's some examples. If you add mid-length alcohols, so these are alcohols where you have a carbon chain with an OH group on the end. Then the carbon chain part can incorporate into the micellar structure, okay, with the OH group near the head group end. And the, and the, the um, alcohol chain can be within the hydrophobic part of the structure. So it can sit at that interface within the micellar structure. That's going to reduce electrostatic repulsions if it's an ionic surfactant. And it'll also reduce any impact that you might have from steric hindrance because of bulky head groups. And so both of these 
things are going to lower the critical micellar concentration. It'll make it easier for my cells to form, even though these micelles now do have alcohol incorporated within the structure. So the micelles will form at lower concentrations. If you add sugars to the solution, sugars has the effect of promoting what we call structuring of water, promoting hydrogen bonding in water because sugars are very good at hydrogen bonding with water. And what this does is it means that water becomes even more unhappy at the fact that it has a hydrophobic material that it, within the surfactant that it is in contact with because it's now got more hydrogen bonding is within its structure because of the sugars. And so the presence of the sugars has the impact of driving the hydrophobic interactions that lead to my cells forming. So my cells are more likely to form, they form at lower concentrations when the sugars are active, sugars are in the solution. This is because we say that sugars are structure makers, they are water structure makers, because they have the impact of increasing the hydrogen bonding ability, really hydrogen bonding well with water. They drive the hydrophobic material out of water more. So um, our micelles are more likely to form. There are other things that you could add, like ure urea or formaldehyde, that are known as water structure breakers. So these are things that actually reduce the hydrogen bonding within water. And so that will have the opposite effect. It'll reduce the drive to form micelles and increase the critical micellar concentration. So what have we learned so far in lectures one and two? We have looked at the factors that affect the CMC, the critical micellar concentration. We've looked at the surfactant structure itself and how that will impact on the formation of micelles and other properties of the solution that might have an impact on the properties of micelles. I have mentioned a little bit about micellar size already when we were talking about differences of ionic and non-ionic surfactants, but just to remind you, non-ionic surfactants, micelles, tend to be larger and they can have around a thousand molecules in a micelle. And this is because we don't have the impact of the repulsion for the charges in the head group that you would have for an ionic surfactant. Ionic surfactants, the head group has a charge, and so this leads to repulsion, and this means that fewer molecules will actually be up within the micellar structure, so around 10 to 100. So 10 or 100 times smaller than the number of molecules that you would see in a non-ionic surfactant micelle. And this is, as I've said, due to those electrostatic repulsions. Now the total size in terms of the, um, the diameter of the micelles, remember they're spherical in structure, will be dominated by the length of the hydrophobic tail, so the size of the hydrophobic portion of the molecule. Now when we talk about micellar shape, I have been talking about a spherical structure and that is because most concentrations that we would ever be working at we would be talking about spherical structures. However you can get um, different structures for surfactant aggregations as surfactants get at very high concentration. So if you keep on increasing the concentration of surfactant then you can get structures that become less spherical. Now we know that they're normally spherical because they tend to be to produce low viscosity solutions and when you get to very high concentrations where they're becoming less spherical then that's going to impact on the viscosity of the solution. So just to summarise for you, the evidence, the experimental evidence that my cells are usually spherical in structure for most concentrations that we would work at is because 
they, they're not too viscous solutions, that the critical micellar concentration depends largely on the hydrophobic part of the molecule, and that when we measure the size of my cells, they're approximately monodispersed, which means they tend to all be round about the same size, which leads you to think about the, the spherical structure. And of course, their ability to solubilize poorly water soluble drugs also leads to the, is due to their spherical structure. So what I'm saying, therefore, is that my cells that we're worried about in pharmaceutical formulations are spherical, like this top green image here with the hydrophilic head group facing out towards the aqueous environment and the hydrophobic tails all pointing inwards. So you have a central oily core. And these systems would be clear and they would be isotropic, which means that the, the structure would look the same from any angle that you would look at it from, because it's spherical. If you increase the concentrations of surfactants, you will get liquid crystal style stru structures. So you could get long rods where the hydrophobic chains and the hydrophilic Hydrophilic head groups are, move, are looking outwards in a, in, a, in a structure that's like cylinders and the hydrophobic tails are going inwards. Or you could get systems lamella structures where you get some, the molecules packing with the head groups and tails all lined up like we see in this bottom picture here. So these types of structures are, li are, are lyotropic liquids, liquid crystals, in that they do not look the same. It does depend on the angle that you're looking at them, what they look like in terms of their size. So if you look at the rods from the end, they'll look spherical. And if you look at the rods from the side, they'll look long and thin, um, like the rods, the rod structures that you can see in the picture there. So from the point of view of pharmaceutical solutions, surfactant concentrations, you should think of them as spherical, but you can make different structures as surfactants if you significantly increase the concentration. I talked about surfactants being able to solubilize poorly water soluble drugs. And so then we need to think a little bit about the structure of the surfactant. So think of cutting through the middle of a spherical micellar structure. And what would you see? Well, I've got two pictures here. The one on the left is what you would see if you cut through um, a micelle where the surfactant head group is charged. And you can see here the surfactant head group is negatively charged. So within the head group area of the micelle, you will have counter ions present that are count because of the presence of the negative charge of the head group. And you can see in the middle, you have a hydrophobic core where the hydrophobic part of the molecules can move around and you provide a perfect environment within that structure for a hydrophobic, a poorly water soluble drug to exist, to improve its solubility and improve its stability. The picture on the right shows the example of where the head group might be hydrophilic. And so the head group here um, will be a polymer chain connected to a polymer hydrophobic chain where one end of the molecule is hydrophilic and interacts very well with water and the other end of the molecule is hydrophobic, it's like a hydrocarbon chain. And so the hydrocarbon chain part points inward and we end up with our hydrophobic core where we know that a poorly water soluble drug may be able to coexist within that structure. 
but the hydrophilic part of the non-ionic surfactant will interact very well with water so it will extend out into water mixing well with water and an example of a hydrophilic part could be something a polyoxyethylene chain so if you've looked at my polymer lectures you'll have seen examples of surfactants where the hydrophilic part of a surfactant polymer is a polyoxyethylene chain and so that will mix really well with water and so that water hydrophilic part of the molecule creates a palisade layer which is well it's where well mixed with the water so we have hydrophobic part that doesn't mix with water and the hydrophilic part of the molecule sticking outwards that do mix really well with water. So that hydrophobic core that we have in both of those structures, whether it's an ionic surfactant or a non-ionic surfactant, we can think of that as being like a liquid hydrog hydrocarbon in the middle. Okay. One other thing to say here is that if you look at the ionic surfactant um, uh, micelle structure on the left there, then you do end up with a layer, a charged layer, that has got these um, counter ions present within them near the surface of the micelle, and that is known as being a double layer, an electric double layer that we'll talk about later for a different system. And that will depend on the ionic strength of the system as a whole. So how many ions are present in solution and oppositely charged ions to the charge of the surfactant head group. You don't need to worry too much about that at the moment. The most important thing to notice is that we have a hydrophobic core where, the, where a, a, a poorly water soluble drug could exist. In the case of solubilization, if we think about uh, a molecule um, that is very hydrophobic, it could exist completely within the core of the micelle, like these green molecules here. If the molecule has hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts to it, but is still poorly water soluble, it could exist at the boundary between the head group and the tails within the micellar structure. And if you have a non-ionic head group, the non-ionic part head group part can be quite long. It can be quite big because it can be polymeric. So you can have a polymeric um, hydrophilic part connected to a polymeric hydrophobic part, creating a um, block copolymer. And so in that case, you would have quite a thick hydrophilic palisade layer where the hydrophilic part of the surfactant mixes well with water. And this provides another place where a molecule could sit to increase its stability. So if it has better solubility in that environment than in water, um, but has some hydrophilicity, it might exist in that region as well. When we talk about solubilization, we will then say we need to know how much of the molecule, how much of our drug molecule is able to be dissolved because of the presence of the surfactant, because of, because of the presence of the surfactant micelle. And that's the maximum additive concentration. So it's the maximum amount of drug that can be incorporated within to the surfactant micellar structure. So my, this is really useful because it can improve the stability and the solubility of the drug and so provide a way of us being able to formulate it and get it into the body. And the micellar solutions, um, we have to remember, can also affect the drug activity. They could protect the drug against hydrolysis, so they could help the stability of the drug. 
they might also impact negatively on the on the ability of the drug to be available for um, for its activity within the body. Surface active drugs um, may also be better as a micellar solution than as a non-micellar solution. So penicillin G, for instance, has been shown to be 2.5 times more stable when it's at concentrations that allow it to be in a micellar solution um, than when it's in a monomeric solution. So penicillin G being a surface active drug itself will form micelles itself without any other additional um, uh, additives to the system. So here's an example. Here we have a non-ionic surfactant. So this has got a hydrophobic tail. Um, and the hydrophobic tail is a hydrocarbon chain where M is the length of the chain. And then it has connected to that uh, as a copolymer, a hydrophilic part where N is the length of the hydrophilic chain there. And this is an ethylene oxide structure that you can see there. So the hydrophobic part gives this a paraffin like central core. And it will be able to improve its solubilization with temperature and with micellar size, which you can alter by changing the size of M or N within the molecule structure. And with, it, with this type of polymer and altering the size of M and N, you can also tailor that to the needs of the molecule that you are trying to incorporate within the micellar structure. So if the drug is very hydrophobic, you might want to have the paraffin central core, like central core to be much bigger. So you might want M to be slightly larger. Or you might have a system where the palisade layer is important. And so that would alter the size of M and N to make sure that you had a suitable micellar concentration, but also suitable sizes of all the different regions within the micellar structure for your drug to exist in. So surfactants are used to improve the solubilization of drugs. There's one more example of a type of surfactant system that can be used in formulations. And this is known as liposomes. And these are lipids, um, so creating bilayer structures like you would see on the um, surface of cells, so, so biological membranes. But these are, and they're known as vesicle structures, but they're called liposomes when they're made of naturally occurring lipids. And so you have within these structures, you can turn them into these spherical structures where this, you have a central core that's hydrophilic, that has, that has aqueous solution in it. And then you have a hydrophobic region, and then you have the outside of the liposome. And in this picture here, one of these liposome structures has been cut in half. So you could see the middle and the um, where the hydrophobic chains are sitting uh, around the edge and then the hydrophilic edge of the of the structure. So these these have been uh, these are very useful as uh, as drug carriers with multiple regions within the structure where the drug can safely sit. So I've talked about ionic surfactants that can be anionic or cationic, depending whether they're negatively or positively charged, and non-ionic surfactants. Anionic surfactants, an example, is the sodium lauryl systems that I've shown you before, where you have um, sulfate head group and different lengths of the hydrocarbon chain, and they're used largely for cleaning. Um, and for medicated shampoos. And cationic surfactants are also used mainly as cleaners. 
non-ionic surfactants um, are used more often for formulation purposes because they tend to be um, more biocompatible, they tend to be less toxic. So these are the ones that are used more commonly in pharmaceutical formulations that where, where we need to go inside the body. Here's a few examples of non-ionic surfactants systems that you can have. The top one there is sorbitan esters known as SPANs, where the, where the 20 here determines the hydrophobic core. So you can get this in different sizes. So you have a hydrophobic tail and then a hydrophilic head group. We then have polysorbates, which are known as tweens. And again, you get those with different lengths of the hydrophobic tail and different lengths of the hydrophilic head groups. You can see there are three hydrophilic head groups within that molecule there. And they are these um, polyethylene oxide chains, so carbon, carbon, oxygen, carbon, carbon, oxygen chains. And then we have peroxymers or pleuronics, um, both of these uh, terms are used to define this structure here, where you have a polypropylene oxide centre that's hydrophobic, so that's carbon, 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 oxygen chains. And then the polyethylene oxide hydrophilic head um, groups on either side. And you can tailor the length of the hydrophobic region and the hydrophilic region of the molecule, depending on how you want to use the surfactant. So finally, one more concept that I would like to explain to you, and that's the hydrophilic lipophilic balance. So that's how um, how much the molecule would prefer to be in a hydrophilic environment, an aqueous environment or a lipid environment. And that will be determined by the relative size of, of the hydrophobic part of the surfactant compared to the hydrophilic part of the surfactant. And if the HLB number is high, it's 18, for instance, then this surfactant will be more hydrophilic than it is hydrophobic in terms of the relative size of the two parts of the molecule. And that would make it a very good solubilizing agent and also a good detergent. At the other end of the scale, if it has a very low HLB number, say between 0 and 6, then it would be much more hydrophobic and the hydrophobic part of the molecule would dominate compared to the hydrophilic part. So it would be very oil soluble. And then it's very good as an anti-foaming agent or as a water in all um, emulsifying agent. So the HLB number of the surfactant helps us determine its use based on what, how hydrophilic it is compared to how hydrophobic it is. So at the end of this lecture, now you should be able to explain how different structural and solution properties of surfactant solution affect the critical micellar concentration and the physical properties of a surfactant solution and how these change um, as you get to the critical micellar concentration and be able to discuss factors that change the shape of the molecule or the critical micellar concentration of the molecule. And also we've discussed the role of surfactants in drug solubilization.